You're a Paleolithic archaeologist and a contractor at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, specifically the Human Origins Program, where you work to engage and teach the public on evolution and archaeology. You're currently working with school teachers in Alabama, which of course is in the news at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Alabama, yeah. of course, is a very evangelical, conservative state. And you're working on how best to introduce the evolution to kids in a sensitive way. Yeah. Now, this is really fascinating. How did this come about? And what can you tell us about this project? Yeah. Awesome. So this project is called Learning Unity and Diversity in Alabama, or LUDA for short. That's kind of how we, we all refer to it. So my boss, Dr. Brianna Pobiner, kind of saw an opportunity because the Alabama standards kind of for what kids need for high school have shifted. They recently changed um, to explicitly have evolution in them. So basically what that means is that teachers are needing to teach evolution in Alabama um, to comply with the, the new standards. And what Brianna kind of saw in that, in that moment and what a lot of the team, because we have a bunch of team members that are from Alabama that work directly with, with high school students who are, you know, educators themselves who do human evolution anyway, what they saw is this this opportunity right that this new standard came out and these teachers are going to be looking for curriculum to fulfill that standard so what can we do as the smithsonian right is what this is again what brianna thought is what can we do as the smithsonian we can offer up and we can create a curricula that is kind of from this apolitical organization right the smithsonian has no stake in any sort of politics but that is trusted, right? We're a trusted name. How can we build a curricula that is trusted, not political, and able to be kind of given to these, these teachers? And it's also being shown that a understanding, an understanding of evolution uh, is really beneficial kind of in, in all aspects of science. But some of the issues, right, with Alabama, Alabama is, I think it is fourth in the country for uh, the acceptance of evolution. And so that's it's really low, right? Uh, fourth, mm. yeah, in first, fourth lowest in the country. And it also is a state that still sometimes, I'm pretty sure has stickers on a lot of the textbooks that say, you know, evolution is just a theory. I couldn't so believe what you said that on the, uh, the the Life and Ruins podcast, you mentioned that, that what, they got a sticker that they put? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And so it's not even in, true. It's not even true in terms of what theory means in a scientific sense. Exactly. So, yes. But, right, all of that is tied up so much more with culture than I think that, like, why Why is that on there? Why, why are those things? And so when it comes to teaching evolution, so much of the barrier is this cultural belief that there is a barrier to believing in evolution, that one has to pick your religious belief versus your uh, the belief that evolution happened. And what many of the team members kind of saw, what Brianna saw, is that that is, that is not a true dynamic, right? That, that you do not have to give up your faith. But also the thing is, is that's really scary for a lot of students, right? So what it's been shown is that um, in a lot of, uh, in kind of some, education education studies that to allow students to verbalize their faith um, before then learning like about evolution it allows students to come at evolution with less of an oppositional viewpoint right that i can say i don't believe in this i'm a christian in th these ways right allows them to verify their faith with their community with themselves uh, and then kind of come to learning about evolution whether that is believing in it or whether that's just learning about the mechanisms. And so what they have developed is the CRS, which is this kind of the beginning part of what we kind of give the teachers to learn uh, or give the teachers to teach, which is the cultural and religious sensitivity. Uh, and basically what that does is it allows students to 
think about different religious viewpoints, different ways of kind of, we call it different ways of knowing, you know, different ways of knowing science. And it kind of proposes there are three different ways that religion and science interact. There's separation, integration, and conflict, right? And it presents several different statements from different religious organizations, from different scientists that are examples of all, all those three ways, right? We're not trying to tell the students which of those three ways they need to pick, but we're showing them that there is more variety uh, in, in how you can approach and understand evolution than maybe just the one they might've been given. And it's been shown that so far we're in like our first year of kind of beta data testing. Um, so right now this project, right, is that we're not just providing the curriculum and then just going away. We're really trying to see, okay, does this help students come and understand and learn evolution and kind of the mechanisms of evolution. And so far what we've kind of seen is that, yeah, it does. It allows students who are incredibly religious to maintain their faith, but understand the mechanisms of evolution a little bit better. Would this be kind of like a theistic evolution approach, the, the idea that, yeah, there could be a God, but perhaps he kicked off the whole ev evolutionary thing, you know? It allows it to be open for the students to decide themselves. It seems to be working then. So far, I mean, uh, the teachers seem really happy. So I'm project manager on that grant. I didn't, you know, the, it, we have this amazing team of people who are, have, you know, are doing curriculum development and activities and reaching out to the teachers. And I'm actually, I think, one of the only people not of faith on the project, right? So all of these people are intensely amazing who are working on this. And so I kind of get this. So I, I want to, I'm, I'm very worried about saying anything wrong, um, you know, or incorrect, right? So I'm, I'm just the project manager. So I'm talking with the teachers and making sure that they're getting the data entered correctly and like that kind of a thing. But it's been really wonderful to be a part of it and to see these amazing scientists at work bridging these gaps. So another person I really recommend, you know, looking up is Dr. Amanda Glaze, who's part of the project, and she has a, a wonderful Twitter and talks often about kind of this connection between science and religion. Now, there are a lot of people out there, not just the religious, but very conservative-minded individuals who are highly resistant to evolution being real and factual. But you have your own way to talk to people about evolution, isn't that right? This is my personal view not necessarily like I'm not speaking for the museum or the grant, um, but I found that this is kind of a good way to approach. Um, so we have, uh, often we have scientists that come into the museum that do like carts. Uh, so whether they bring a skull out or they bring an object and then they can kind of have this one-on-one -on -one or more personal interaction with the public. And sometimes you do then get there in those interactions. Sometimes you get people who do not believe in evolution and I used to think, like, I have Darwin's handwriting, you know, written on my arm. And I, I used to always think, if you don't believe in evolution, it's a personal insult to me. And that's just not true, right? Um, for many different people, the belief in evolution, there's this, again, kind of talking again about this idea that there is an opposition, that you have to pick one of, one or the other. And for so many people, their religious faith is so incredibly important to them, to their community. Often churches are spaces of, you know, healing are places where, you know, your entire social structure, right, can revolve around a religious or organization or, or whatever church that you go to. And so for many people, the idea that I have to pick between a belief in evolution or the entire structure of my social circle why would you ever pick evolution? You know, and I, I know I wouldn't if that was if that was something that I felt deeply, I would never pick to believe in evolution over if I saw that as an actual disconnect, right? I would always pick my family, my friends, my like my culture before a belief in something. So so that's kind of where we have to start off when we have a lot of these conversations, right? Having an oppositional yeah. approach wanting to argue, no, you're wrong, this is right, here are all these facts. When, okay, when have you ever, if someone came up to you, right, and said, you're dumb, you're wrong in these ways, this is why you're incorrect, completely incorrect, your, your parents who believe this are wrong, you who believe this are wrong, your deeply held belief is wrong, when have you then gone, oh my God, you're totally right, 
I'm wrong. You know, that's, that's never going to work. Um, at least in my experience, that's never going to work. Um, so when yeah, the instinct is to, is to, to hit it, back, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Your instinct is to like, kind of get defensive. And so one of the really important things to do is, is to do a non-confrontational approach. You know, it's, you have to be empathetic when you are approaching people who don't believe in evolution, um, or, or have kind of, or, or trying to have that kind of fight with you. And that's why I think there are a lot of very famous scientists who don't do this well. Uh, and who, who create a bad name, I think, for a lot of STEM by having this oppositional, look at how dumb this person is. I'm the scientist. I'm arguing with this person. And I think what that does is that takes all empathy out of the situation. It forgets how important religion it is for many, many people. It also forgets that there are many, many scientists who are deeply religious, who also believe in evolution. So I like to start off with when I'm encountering someone of uh, religious faith that doesn't necessarily believe in evolution and wants to have that conversation with me, I often say, okay, your personal belief explains why. Why are human, why do humans have souls? Why are we, you know, important? Why, why do we interact with one another the way we do? Evolution just explains how, the minutia, right? And so I start from that perspective, um, personally. And then if you continue to have a conversation with someone, what's, what's really important is you want to de-escalate the situation, right? You want to, you want to pick then, okay, what are they saying? And really listen, because I think that we get, again, we get defensive and we don't listen to what they're telling us because what they're telling us often is a fear, right? They have a fear of something. Why I, I don't believe in this because of something. And what we're doing is we're not picking out that fear and addressing that fear to de-escalate the situation. So again, so much of this is wrapped around having empathy for different people. So we want to pick out that fear. Okay, what are they afraid of? How can we address that and talk about what they're afraid of? And then also, you know, pick a shared value. You probably, any person out there, you have a shared value with someone, right? Whether that be, you know, don't, don't be mean to each other, you know, something like that. You probably have a shared value. You can connect on that shared value and then continue to have a conversation on more of a level playing field. So uh, common ground, you mean? Yeah, common exactly. Ground. Common ground. Um, and then also kind of the final thing is that, again, this isn't an argument. There's nothing to be won. If they don't, you know, and also, like, you know, a lot of these interactions, right, is you're not going to have, you know, you're not going to convince someone in 10 minutes uh, of a conversation to change a deeply held belief. What you can do is you can be respectful and you can be kind and you can allow them to have a scientific interaction that doesn't make them shy away from all of science. And that's kind of the thing. As I, I see so, too often the, the, the people feeling the need to fight. And then what that does is it turns people off from all of science. Uh, and that's not what we want, right? Is that even if they have just a, a nice interaction where you're like, okay, that's fine. You don't agree with me and I, I don't agree with you, but that's fine. Let's do this activity together or let's look at this dinosaur or let's look at this, you know, hominin. Because otherwise the focus becomes the fight and not the, the learning experience. Exactly. And that's what they're going to remember when they leave the museum or that interaction with you, right? They're not going to remember meeting a scientist and or and their kid having a fun time. They're going to remember I had this really silly argument that made me upset, you know? Um, so that's like how I, I think that we need to really start. And there are many people out there doing this, right? There are many people being trained to do this. And I think that what I'm frustrated in is often in popular culture and in the media, we have, we like to glorify often um, older men who like to yell about how you're wrong and dumb. Uh, and I don't think that's doing help. That's not helping anyone. I don't know. I will put links to all your social media in the description below. And if there's anyone who wants to contact you regarding paleoanthropology, archaeology, and the sciences in general, is it okay for them to, to do that? Hell yeah. You're welcome to DM me or on Twitter or Instagram. Mm -hmm. I yeah, check them regularly. Excellent. I will put those in the uh, description below, like I said. So, Ella Baldwin, thank you very much indeed. And uh, hopefully we will catch up with you again for another chat. Thank you.